All right, back. Chris is back in the house. I think he's been regular the last couple of weeks. Episode 29. We thought we'd change things up a little bit today. We were just quickly chatting off air about some of the dumbest and stupidest things we've ever seen in our training sort of life on the track and off the track. I've seen some pretty stupid things on the track and some pretty stupid things in the gym. I thought we'd just uh, have a bit of a funny session talking about some of these dumb things. So um, I was just kicking off before about, and I won't name names, not that many people listen to our podcast, but just in case, I don't want to be calling people out, but I was at a track meet, state relays one year, and uh, a particular athlete decided to do a couple of block starts, as you do. We all get down the blocks, and before we we uh, take off, we do a couple of starts. And then the start of the relay, he – and I was literally standing directly opposite his blocks in this particular day. I was standing right at the start line. People are screaming at him, and he's on the start line without the baton in his hand. And he's taken off and didn't realise. He ran the entire – first leg with no baton and he got to the first change and realized he didn't have a baton in his head and i actually think they kept running for a bit i think the second runner kept going as well and then the third runner stopped i can't remember how far they got round, but um and people were screaming at him you don't have a baton you don't have a baton but didn't register kept going and you know this particular person and it doesn't surprise either of us that uh he would do something like that but very funny to see someone going around the track without no baton, without well, a baton. An imbecile. Um, <laughs> the only other imbecile I know, which I was really unfortunate to be in a relay with him and only twice in my life, and both times the baton did not go around. Um, um, I was the anchor leg. He was the third runner. Um, I didn't hear any commands, didn't hear a thing. I started running into the zone, and then I just felt the baton hit me in the back. <laughs> So he threw it at me, <laughs> threw it, hit me in the back. It was one way to make up a few metres. Yeah. At that point, we were in the in first place. And once it hit me in the back, that was it. Four by one. You're stuck. <laughs> so, but, you know, in all – I mean, from your our point of view, we've run a lot of relays in our career. Um, you know, I think some weekends we used to – our big weekends, you would run eight relays sometimes in a weekend, right? Six or eight relays. So, and we practiced a lot as well. So, and we would typically with a normal team together, um, some of the uh, um, not so competent runners that we've run with over the years, we would get the baton around every time. I've been in very few races where the baton hasn't gone around. Um, and it was so easy to, in our day, when we were all running really well, to even break records and win races just by getting the baton around smoothly. You didn't have to even be the fastest most of the time, right? Because mm. the changes are so messed up. On a more serious note, just for a moment, I still can't believe the amount of times I've seen international events with the highest level of athletes um, fuck up baton changes. Like, I've seen the US team do it so many times, and you think to yourself, how do you get that so wrong? When this is your job, two reasons: massive ego, and um, hang on, I'm just going to shut this door because a garbage truck's just arrived. Yeah, um, massive egos, and they don't practice. Yeah, and I, the the practice thing's probably an interesting one, and people forget to realise that when you bring a relay team together, those individual athletes probably all live in different states. Yeah, they and then they're, they're turning up to a major international meet and trying to come together very quickly. We were fortunate that when we ran, that we all trained together and ran together all the time. So, mm-hmm. but it still surprised me at that level. But you're right about the egos. I mean, how many times have we run? And our problem was always you throw some other unknown into our relay team, and someone either takes off too early. Um, or takes off too late. They just don't know that drill of, you know, and going when you go. Well, interestingly, and I mean, I, I've only ever had the baton not go around twice, and it's the same guy every time. Um, but uh, last year's Queensland State Relays uh, was a four by one. Um, because I've got a strong 200, so I'm obviously going to run the longest leg. So I'm running the back straight. This guy, who was the, who was the second change, he's the third runner. He's standing in lane four. Um, 
I was in reasonably good shape. I was still I'm running like 24 low for 200. So I'm coming in fairly quickly over 100 metres. He did, did not move. He stood there like a statue. And I'm looking at him going, well, he's going to start running soon. Going to start. He didn't. He did not move. I ran into him. I ran into him at full speed. I hit him. I bounced him into lane three. I ended up in lane five and impeded another runner. Um, he jumped back into the lane. I literally just handed it to him and he started running. Um, they didn't disqualify us. In, what? Didn't, didn't get disqualified. I couldn't believe it. Um, and um, and that, was, that was, it would have been singly one of the worst changes you could ever imagine. Where you he, should have um, run past him and continued on, just run the 200. Which I've <laughs> But I said to him, why didn't you go? And he said to me, he did a small um, uh, hamstring strain in the warm-up and he didn't want to tell anyone. So he thought it'd be easier if he didn't start running and just stood there. <laughs> that would be easier. And, you know, anyway, it was an absolute debacle. People watching just were like, you, can, you know when you hear the crowd make a sound like when someone falls in gymnastics or something? Yes, people, yeah. Everyone go, oh, you know, like what's happened? That's what you heard. Because it wasn't Masters State Relays. It was the State Relays. Yeah, State Relays, yeah. State. Yeah, there's some interesting things that happened. Talking about gymnastics, it just made me flash back to remember that year many years ago. Um, God, I'm talking about probably in the 80s now when that gymnast on the vault ran straight into the end of the vault. Yeah. You ever seen that clip? Yeah. They're literally at full tilt and they hit the board and they just hit the end of the vault. It stops them completely dead. They, I don't know whatever happened to that person. They must have broken a few ribs. That's been power. That's a weird thing. That guy was so strong and robust. He actually, it just winded him. He walked back and then did the vault. Really? <laughs> it looked way worse than what it was. But when you go back and view that clip and then and then because most people just view that clip and never see what happened to him, he actually yes. went back and did the vault. And what about the guy at the last Olympics where we were talking about, I don't think you showed me the clip of the guy in the long jump getting it completely wrong in the air. Oh, yeah, that was from Jamaica. Um, yeah. <laughs> Lucy won world championships and uh, flew through the air landed on his head. <laughs> but he beat. He'd never jumped. It's the furthest he'd ever jumped in his life. Landed. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, it was a personal record. Um, but a lot of people also forget the year 2000 Olympics where every single female vaulter fell. In a, every one of them. Then they, Why was that the vault um, for the 2000? The, everyone fell. And then they realised they put the vault was at the wrong height. Oh, that's right. That's right. I remember that. They did. So if you practice at a certain height and it's the Olympic height, your body is just so trained to that height. As soon as yeah. there's any change, you're, you're off. So they're yeah. all falling and no one knew why. They're all getting it wrong. And then they realized they'd set it at the wrong height. I mean, how yeah. do you get that wrong beyond me? You get yeah, one job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Exactly. Um, you get one job. It's almost like... You know, the other day we, I mean, not too long, we had a really um, a high performance event. We had our Olympic athletes there looking for qualifying times from Paris. I'm standing on the track because I'm the official starter. And I looked up at the box and this wasn't my job. And it was a, um, uh, a 400 um, hurdles. And I just, I got on the walkie talkie and I said, how many times are you expecting these guys to jump? Um, in 400, how many hurdles do you reckon they should have to jump? And they go, they've got 10 to do. And I said, well, you might want to have a look at the, the final bend because there's no hurdle out there. <laughs> they're, going to, they're going to come through counting steps, expect to jump and see nothing. And that, yeah. that, unbelievably, no one had noticed. Yeah. For me. Um, and they went, oh, my God, quick. And they ran around like, you know, rabbits trying to get that last hurdle. I said, these are just things that you should never miss. Yes. But, oh, it's a, but again, we've spoken about this before, particularly at just local meets and even international meets. I know they're trained and so forth, but there's so many volunteers, right? 
and they just get a little bit, you know, blase about it. I got but, a um, story though quickly because this is hilarious. This guy only told me this the other day. He's an Australian coach. He was officiating at the two thousand games when Kathy Freeman, you know, won the four hundred meter gold medal. Mm-hmm. But he was at the pole vault with Tatiana Grigorieva, mm-hmm. who was jumping for the gold medal. Ended up with the silver medal. When Kathy walked out onto the track, right, this guy. I don't want to say his name because he probably might get in trouble for this. But he said there was a technical issue with the with the um, equipment just so he could wait to watch Kathy Freeman's 400. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Good Olympic Games. So he's yeah. mucking around with the um, the pole vault thing and yeah. go, no, no, no jump, no jump, nobody can jump, and then watched Kathy Freeman run the 400. Perfect. <laughs> and then said, no, nah, it's all good now. And you can start jumping because her final was on at exactly the same time as the 400 meter finals. Um, Kathy and Michael Johnson were running. Yes, okay. Yeah, so he stopped the pole vault. Wow, interesting. To watch Kathy, he told me that story up at the performance center. Um, Still one of the best 400 meter um, races ever, I'd say. Apart from the best race I've ever seen her in was that uh, stall cool. handicap race. Yeah, it's amazing. Still acknowledge that. That stall run on grass was the best 400 she's ever run. Yeah, for sure. Most people, um, you know, wouldn't know about that. But if you're into track, it's one of those races you should go and watch because it's absolutely phenomenal. Oh, but going back to some of the dumbest things I've ever seen, oh, yeah. you know, I trained in the gym for many, many years when I was younger and I trained in a real meathead gym. It was just full of all the bros, all the gym bros. And, uh, you know, back in the day when... Remember the bench press uprights used to be really close together? Mm-hmm. And when you had the bar on the uprights, like now the bench press, you know, uprights are really far apart. They're probably a metre and a half apart, you know, a metre or so. But back in the day, they were really close together. And when you put the bar on there, if you took a plate off one side, the bar used to tip up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do. So you used to have to push the plate right hard up against the rack from one side, then walk around the other side when the bar was then levering out a long way and take the plate off and then walk back around the other side. But you had to push the bar across. Mm -hmm. So all our benches were really narrow and the uprights were really narrow. And if you took the weight off when the bar was just sitting in a normal position, the bar would flip over. Yeah. Literally flip over. Yeah. Our benches were bolted to the floor. This is at the Broadmeadows Leisure Centre down in Melbourne, out in the suburbs where I grew up, super rough, super meathead gym. And a guy walks in the gym untrained. Everyone knew the protocol in the gym, and we had three or four benches in a row, and they were bolted down, so he actually couldn't move them. And uh, he proceeds to sit down, and he's got – there's a 50 – most people, you know, in the gym, everyone was pretty strong. They'd always just leave 250-pound – this is back when it was pounds – 250-pound plates on the bar. He gets on the bench. And he wants to take the 50s off. There's a guy bench pressing beside him a ton of weight, you know, probably two or 300 pounds. He walks around to the bar. He doesn't know about pushing the trick. You've got to push the, the bar in so, so the bar doesn't flip. He pulls the weight off on one side. So let's say he's standing on the left-hand side of the bench and there's a guy bench pressing on the right-hand side. The bar now has a 50-pound plate on the opposite side. It counterlevers so fast and the plate... The whole bar flips over, hits the guy beside him in the face, knocks his front teeth out. Mm. The bar goes across so quickly and smacks him straight in the face. This guy's laying there bench pressing and then gets hit in the face with a bar. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah. 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 So I've seen a few crazy things. And another guy one night at the gym, he was uh, back again, these um, no chains, and they were just those uh, uh, wire cables for the lap machine. And they would fray all the time. And the gym would never replace anything. And he's doing, he was a really big guy too. Um, not muscly big, just big and really strong. He had the whole stack of the lat pull down weights. You know, let's say it's 120 on the numbers, um, 140, whatever it was. And these guys would then put another pin in the front of the stack and put a weight on the pin. You've seen people do that? So they hang a 50 pound plate on the front of the stack. And he's pulling mm. this weight down as hard as he could. The cable snaps and he's pulling like 200 pounds down from that pool mm. and the cable breaks in half. He pulls so hard, hits himself in the head, splits his forehead open. He's laying on the floor in the gym, completely out cold. <laughs> Just 
I've never seen any of these accidents happen in a modern day gym, but back in the gym I was just training, some of the shit that used to happen there was crazy. <laughs> well, one, one of the funniest lines I ever heard was actually from Homer Simpson when he went to the gym once, other than when he was walking past and he went and he called it a gyne and he was like, gyne? What the hell is a gyne? And then walked in with, oh, yeah, right, gone. And But he was on the lap pull-down machine, but he was laying um, on his back like it was a chest press. And the yeah. weight him in the forehead as he's, you know, <laughs> as he's releasing it. And yeah. he said, oh, he's going to feel this tomorrow. <laughs> back in his head, you know, the, the weight into his uh, Pretty funny. Mate, don't worry. I've seen some people in the gym doing some stuff like that as well where, you know, they don't know how to use machines. But, God, some of the accidents I saw in the gym when I was younger um, and just some of the angry people in the gym I used to train in, I've seen people throw dumbbells across the room, you know, um, pick up plates off the ground and just hurl them across the room. But, yeah, there's been some crazy things, some funny things happened over the years and lots on the track. Pole vaults have broken and uh, um, – I think I saw a hurdle snap one day as well somehow, and they probably can't snap anymore just what they're made out of, but the old wooden yeah. hurdles. Yeah, but I, I, I'm in the gym a lot, as you know, and with a lot of athletes and whatever, and I, 99 times out of 100 will never say a word to anyone, and I don't really care what they're doing. But I did say something to someone the other day because it really looked like he was going to hurt himself and because um, I'd never seen anyone try and do this before, and I just went over and said, "Mate, please stop doing that." And I sh- and he was trying to do deadlift. Well, that's an, that's an exercise you can hurt yourself on with his feet together. Oh yes, sir. Yeah. It's so unstable and so dangerous to try and lift a heavy weight deadlifting with an Olympic bar with your feet together. It's the dumbest thing ever, and you're just caught in. I just walked over and said, "Mate." I don't know who told you that. I don't know where you saw it, but mate, get your feet apart and get your hips and get in the right position. You are just, and, he, and every but everything was wrong. It wasn't just the fact that he had his feet together. Everything. <clears throat> yeah. And because he was a younger guy, but a big guy, and and everyone look is looking to PB in the gym. All they're just going, all they're going to do is give themselves a back injury. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. It's the only time in, that I've ever gone over and said, mate, you are going to put yourself in hospital, please stop doing that. Um, yeah, I think I've reached that point as well. Every now and then when I'm in the gym, I you, you want to go over and actually, you know, give someone um, some advice or some help or whatever, but I try and avoid it now as well. Never do it. But uh, thing that I have been doing is when I see someone doing an exercise that's a bit unusual but really smart, really clever that very few people know about, I will go over and, and compliment them and say, that's a great exercise and you're going to get massive benefit out of that. Like yeah. you don't see many because people come and say that to me often when they see me doing very, very specific exercises because they walk over and ask me, why am I doing it? Like, why would you, why would you do that? As opposed to when you know, they say, I'm just, they're just curious as to why I exercise that way. And then I explain to them that I'm, I'm still a competing track athlete and this is, um, triggering this muscle system and I get this benefit when I walk out onto the track. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't understand um, why, I'm, why I'm doing the things I'm doing. Um, yeah, for because, sure. So it's always interesting, um, those things. And the only other thing, by the way, I sacked an athlete the other day. It's the first time I've done it in a long, long time. I just reached the end of my rope um, with her. She just kept saying to me, um, she just kept changing things like all the time saying, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do it this way. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this. This will be better for me. I believe I want to do this. And I'm like, fuck, I've had it. Go do whatever you want. (laughs) I can't take it anymore. I said, as a coach, I can't give you any meaningful training that's going to make a difference to you. I just can't. Yeah. I said, just go do whatever you want to do. Whatever makes you happy, go do it. And then I did not realize what came next. The amount of vitriol and anger that came back at me, you know, and, and, then, all, and then it went from that to, 
oh no 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 it's wrong i'll do whatever you say and you don't i'm, I'm so, sorry apologies and i said no 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 we're past that we're past yeah. that this is a breakup this, we're done you've got and to you stand st- your ground on some of these things sometimes and who's got the time to waste with people like that anymore at our yeah. age i mean no one needs that rubbish in your life and as you said if people like if everything you say to somebody and they're coming to you for advice, but then everything they've got a, a counter argument for, what's the point? I mean, just as you said, I mean, clearly you know what you're doing. Just go and do it on your own. Yeah, just You'll go and 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 she'll come up and say, yeah, but I'm doing some of the things you told me. And I'm like, no, yeah. I don't care. I said, I'm, I said, you've just come to me now after I've just done four weeks of programming and progressions on where we need to go. And you've said, no, nah, that won't work. I'm going to go and do 400 meter work now. She's a sprinter, by the way. She gasses after 60 meters. Gas. Yeah. yeah. Can't run beyond 60 meters. Now she's going to go out to 250 meters and 300 meters, and is telling me that that will work better for her. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to run those distances so slowly. It's a wait. You won't get anything from it. It's a waste of time. Yeah. Running yeah. 45 second 250 meter reps is a waste of time. It's a, it's, you'll get nothing from it. I said, yeah, unless, <clears throat> unless she's an 800 meter running, she's doing 25 set, you know, 25 reps or something. She's not. <laughs> and I, I said, you know, if you're not happy with what you're doing in the, in the, in the 80 meter progressions I've given, I'd actually shorten it up to um, 20, 30s, and 40s to correct the things that are going wrong in your life. It's not taking you out to 250. I promise you that's not the answer. She said, yeah, yeah well, I'm going to do it anyway. And I said, good, you're on your own. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. And I haven't said that to anyone in probably, God, years. Where I've, And I've been tolerating this, by the way, for months. Because I know it. If it hadn't been anyone else, it would be gone after a day. But I've kind of like, I've, I've tolerated it, but it's just, it was... I just lost my mind yesterday, so I can't take it anymore. Does she? Uh, <clears throat> she hopefully she doesn't listen to your podcast. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. <laughs> not yeah. so, and I'm How not. Do I find her? Maybe I need to send it. Uh, look, there's a there's a fine line for everyone. At some point in time, um, we, you know, and I've got to this point in my life as well, and not in a bad way. And you said something to me a while back, which I'll tell you in a moment. Um, you just got to, and it's not even about like cutting i don't even see this cutting people now you just got to move on you just life is about just moving on and you know you get to a certain point in life and you just got to realize what's important and what's not anymore and and i hear this these stories with personal trainers all the time about trying to help our clients you know and every bit of advice they give them the clients always got another way a better way or why that won't work right oh that won't work because and it's like well what are you paying me for what are you coming every week for you clearly know more than I do. Just go and do it yourself. Yeah, exactly. But you said to me some time ago, and I repeat this all the time about, you know, I had a close friend who um, we've parted ways as friends after 25 years. And I don't even still know the r- real reason why. He's never actually explained to me, but he just won't speak to me. And, you know, I was a bit disappointed. And you made the comment one day, well, just because they've been in your life for 20 years, it doesn't mean they've got to be there for another 20 years going forward. And I just thought, it's so true. I mean, you know, maybe that point, they've served their purpose for that first 20 years, right? And maybe they don't need to be there now. So, yeah, you've got to move on from these people in our life at our age, mate. It's just not worth it. <laughs> well, like I always say to everyone, everything that has a beginning has an end. 100%. Sometimes it's a day, sometimes it's a lifetime. But, it yeah. really, you know, it's just like, and the, and the other bugbear that I've had, and it happens every January, but this year I really, really, lost my mind with this which was as i mentioned to you earlier about new year's resolutions yes person that walks up to me and it happened the other day and they said to me chris this is the year this is the one this is my new year's resolution and i just went stop talking to me it's just done it i think if you have to wait till january 2024 to decide yeah. to do something about your <laughs> pitiful situation it's never gonna happen ever no you're done you Give up, go back to KFC and have another bucket of chicken. You're finished. <laughs> That's why I said, I'm not even, don't even tell me, I don't even care what you have resolved in your mind because I promise you it's not resolved. I promise you. 
I said, you won't make it till the end of January, let alone the year. You forget it. And don't even, and I don't care you think I'm horrible or, or I'm not encouraging. I don't care because you won't do it <laughs> and don't talk. Mate, you sound like David Goggins. <laughs> well, not David. It reminded me of that Seinfeld episode when Kramer said he was going to reshape his whole apartment into, you know, levels. Do you remember yeah. that episode? No, and Jerry, I don't. Jerry bet him like a hundred bucks that he wouldn't do it. And then Kramer tried to get out of the bet because he didn't do it. And he said, well, I'm not, I, the bet's off because it's not that I don't, um, that I um, can't do it. I just don't want to do it. But, yeah. <laughs> but that was the bet that you won't <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't want to do it. Yeah. It's so easy to actually make everything right in their own mind, right? But yeah, going back to that, um, and I, I'm in agreement with you. Why do we wait to New Year's to actually start this new diet? I was with another friend the other week and, you know, having a coffee and they go and grab a muffin and they want to actually start eating a bit better. And it's like, oh, I'm starting next week. I'm starting next Monday. And I'm like, what's wrong with you starting right now? <laughs> And my sister says to me the other day, which I found quite unusual as well, and she, my sister's very good at freely admitting stuff to me. She said, because oh, she's been riding the bike, she's got this hippie um, injury at the moment, so she's just trying to get on the bike a bit. And uh, obviously over Christmas, things got out of sorts, whatever else, understandable, we all get busy. And she said, it was a Monday or Tuesday. No, it might have been a Tuesday or a Wednesday. And I said, oh, how's your cycling going every day? She's like, oh, no, I got so out of sorts. And I can't do anything during the week. I have to start it on a Monday. Otherwise, I don't actually get going. She said, so I'm going to wait until next Monday. And I said, that just does not make any logical sense whatsoever to me. You know, because it's not a Monday, you want to start on a Monday, and now you got to wait a whole week to not do anything. So, but we all have these idiosyncrasies. But I was saying to you the other day, or I think I sent you a text, um, a podcast I was listening to, they were talking about some guy that owns... Um, he, he's either the owner of a chain, chain of pizza franchises or he owns a pizza, uh, pizza store. And he was saying the first, this is in the US, the first two weeks of the year are their quietest weeks of the year every year. Oh until, God. he said, because everyone's gone on their New Year's resolutions and they don't eat pizza. He said, but on around about the 12th of January, he said, sales go through the roof again. Then I read the other day, apparently the 12th of January is National Quitters Day. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> too funny, right? But so every year, I mean, the pizza businesses probably should just close down for those two weeks, right? Just say, okay, we have had these two weeks off. Let's just take our break every year and we'll come back and we'll have these booming sales. But but you read it everywhere. Every single man and his dog has this New Year's resolution. And how many people actually follow through with anything? Why make these particular crazy claims? You know, and I'm going to start on this day. Well, that's when people tell me they're starting tomorrow. I tell them, don't start tomorrow, push your start date out. Yeah. <laughs> because the further you push it out, the further away that date is to you quitting. And then yes, so true. Like, yeah, <laughs> just pushing your start date out. And then your quitting date gets further and further away. And that's a good thing. Yeah, then you could say, at least I didn't quit for six months. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't quit for the whole year. I haven't started yet. But yeah, I haven't started yet. I haven't quit. <laughs> exactly. That path, you'll never be disappointed. Oh, no, exactly. So, yeah, that's that's the tweet of the week. <laughs> Make your start date, you know, as far out as possible, so your quitting date gets further out. Yeah, yeah. Push yeah. Start that out as far as you can, and you'll never have to deal with quitting. Yeah, that's I don't know why. Thing you can do. So I think that's the um these people cannot be helped. No, mate, and we've spoken about this so many times about you know the world the gym memberships have gone through the roof. I read the craziest oh, statistic mate. yesterday, considering when we're um, you know, we're in a country of only twenty six million people. Planet Fitness, how many members do you think Planet Fitness has? Globally? Or... I don't, they're not they're not global, are they? They're global business. Yeah, they're opening here in Australia. Oh, okay. Okay. So maybe it's a global number. I just thought they were in the US. Um, in the US, though, um, Jesus, Planet Fitness, it'd have to be, it'd have to be in the million, surely. 20 million. Yeah. Now, I didn't realise I was global and I don't know what other countries are in, but. Yeah, 20 million and they're only paying, what, 20 bucks a month? 
They're only paying like 20 bucks. Oh, I think some of them are 10. I was at one of the, not a Planet Fitness, but very similar setup down in Denver. It was $10 a month. That was just to walk in and use the gym. Yeah, it was only 10 bucks a month. Yeah. It's amazing compared to here. You can't, right? But obviously their model works because it's really profitable now. Apparently the business is. is doing really well. The one just opening up in Southport, which is the Nevin advertising everywhere to try and get people. But I'm I'm paying like seventeen or eighteen dollars a week, but I get you know track pool. I get everything. Yeah, yeah, so that's a. Um, I think for that money, that's not bad. I'll pay that um, for the facilities that I need. Um, but um, you have cold plunge there. I think I've asked you this. Yeah, what's the temperature they're on the cold plunge at? It's not cold enough. Um, it's only around 14 degrees. Mm. Um, and the reason that they don't want to get down to where I believe it should be, which is eight or nine, is because it's a government asset. And mm. that whole, if it gets too cold and someone has an accident in there, you know, they're liable. So they keep it at about 14. Um, if you go to recovery centre, they get it down to um, eight and nine degrees and a little bit chillier. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. That's where it needs to be, in my view, around eight. Yeah. I just find 14, it's just, I can sit in it's, there for a long time. Yeah, that's ocean sort of temperature in the winter it in takes Sydney. too long to get the effect you want at 14. I've read, look, I know other guys are going down to, Mix just set one up at home in Adelaide. He's down to seven. He had it down to five. He said his wife can't use it at five, so he's going up to seven. I thought I read the science is basically saying between nine and 11 degrees is optimum. Yeah, eight to nine. Is, is optimum is uh, what the science is telling us so um yeah um i um i just know that when, when you're in eight degree water or nine degree your body's going to react really quickly yeah 14 degrees it just takes a little longer and the thing is it just if you can get it done at eight in minutes why just sit around for 20 minutes in 14 degree i don't have the time or the inclination to be sitting in there and I, I just need to be in there for two to three minutes and then and then into the hot stuff. Yeah, they were saying that um, or some uh, a podcast I listened to a few weeks ago, and I haven't actually dug any deeper in this. I've been using cold forever, not at that cold, obviously cold showers and cold water. And of all, if, whether it was placebo or not, I've just always loved the effect. But this scientist was basically the research they're showing now, and she did call, pull a lot of papers that other research around the world that it's, um, she said nine to 11 or eight to 11, whatever, or somewhere around there. And 11 minutes per week combined total, um, you yeah. know, gives you massive effect. And it's not 11 minutes in one sitting. It's, no. it's doing like, you know, three to six minutes per, per day or every other day. And they were saying that between 11 minutes, uh, 11 minutes per week, maybe as a minimum, can't recall. Um, that's where you get the benefit from. So, yeah. My plan is if I get up to, or when I get up to Queensland, I really now I'm, I, I want to get myself a little townhouse somewhere because I really want to put a sauna and a cold plunge in the backyard. Just have a little freestanding townhouse and um, that's how I'd like to be set up up there. Yeah, they're good. So, it, it yeah. Goes from a recovery point of view, it, they, I, I know for me, I mean, I like to do two minutes in eight or nine degrees and then one minute in the warm and I do that three times. And that's yes. all. Don't need any more. Yeah. And I get a really nice effect from that. Um, yeah. In terms of flushing all those um, uh, capillaries uh, to my muscle. So, and I do that in yeah. with a bit of compression and then I'm good. It definitely feels good. That's for sure. All right. We might call it a day. A couple of stupid stories about uh, people doing stupid things in the track and the gym and, yeah, New Year's resolutions. People doing crazy things there. That's never going to change. That's just going to go on forever. We need to somehow develop a business around that. I don't know how we extract money out of people, but maybe they've got to pay for their, you know, to actually be involved and have a commitment somehow. And then, you know, if they last over a month or two months, they get their money back. Well, you know, they're not going to last that long. I work with, it's all about accountability. Yeah, 100%. You know, I'm on my way from here uh, to 9.30 to the, to the university gym. I got two young athletes, a 19-year-old and a 24-year-old, both female, very good sprinters, but I just do not understand what to do in the gym. And I'm just going to give them their like a base level of exercises which will help them on the track. 
Yeah, sure. So yeah, that's that's my next part of my morning. Good, good. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a wrap. Until Very, next time. Okay, done. Cheers. All right, bye.